Treasure Island. Chapter 4 I heard people running to look at the island, and I quietly climbed out of the barrel. I then walked up to join the sailors at the side of the ship. We could see two low hills and one big one. The island was now very close. I've been here before, said Silver. I know where the ship should stop. I have a map here, said Captain Smollett. Can you take us to that place? I saw that Silver was excited to take the map, but it was not the one with the treasure marked on it. Yes, I can see it. You must go here, he said, pointing to a place on the map. Then he turned to me and said, you'll love this island. You can swim and climb trees and walk up the hills. I smiled at Silver, but inside I was very frightened of him now. I could not trust anything that he said. I soon found Dr. Levzi and quietly said to him, I must speak to you, Captain Smollett and Mr. Trelawney. I have some terrible news. Dr. Levzi's expression did not change. He asked me to find his glasses downstairs, and walked off to talk to Mr. Trelawney and Smollett. I waited downstairs and soon the three men joined me. What do you want to tell us? asked Mr. Trelawney. I told them everything that I had heard in the barrel. When I finished talking, they thanked me. Captain, said Mr. Trelawney. You were right and I was wrong. What shall we do? I'm surprised too, said Captain Smollett. They have worked hard and been a better crew than I expected. Now we must continue. We can't go back, or they might attack us immediately. I don't think that they will attack us until we find the treasure. Long John Silver did not find all of this crew, so some of the men are good men. We must wait, watch and attack them when they don't expect it. Jim can help us, said Dr. Levzy. The men all trust him. He can listen and find out who we can trust. I did not like this thought. I counted the men that Silver did not find for the crew. There were seven from a crew of nineteen, and I was one of them. The next morning, the Hispaniola stopped close to the island. There were many trees, and above the trees I saw the rocky tops of the hills. Silver helped Captain Smollett to sail the boat closer to the shore. It was very hot and very quiet. It smelled like bad eggs. This place is only good for diseases, said Silver. The crew worked hard on our journey to the island, but now they did not seem to want to work. I remembered Dr. Levzy talking about a mutiny. Perhaps it was near. Only Silver worked as hard as usual. Later, Captain Smollett told us that he had a plan. Let's ask the men if they'd like to spend the afternoon on the island. If they go, we can take the ship. If they don't go, we know we need to fight them for the ship. Mr. Trelawney agreed. We decided to tell all the men we could trust about our plan and gave them all guns. Captain Smollett then told the crew that they could all have the afternoon on the island to relax, if they wanted to. When you hear a gun at the end of the day, it'll be time to come back, he said. All the crew suddenly looked happy and they all agreed to go. Perhaps they thought that they could find the treasure immediately. Captain Smollett asked Silver to organize the men. Six men would stay on the Hispaniola and thirteen would take the small boats to the shore. I realized that there were six of Silver's men on the ship. The men in our group would not be able to take the ship. So I decided I would go with Silver onto the island. I got on one of the boats quietly, but Silver saw me. Had I made a big mistake? The boat I was in was fast, and we were nearly on the beach first when I held on to the branch of a tree and jumped out of the boat. I heard someone calling me, but I did not listen and began to run as fast as I could. When I stopped, I felt happy. 
Silver did not know where I was. This part of the island was open, with just a few trees. I could see the hills in front of me. As I walked, I saw pretty flowers, snakes and small birds. Suddenly a cloud of birds flew into the sky and knew that something was coming towards me. I was correct, because I then heard people talking. I decided to hide behind some trees. I realized that one of the people was silver, but I could not hear what he was saying. Soon the birds returned, and I knew that the men had gone. I told myself that it was my job to find out what these men were planning to do. So I decided to follow them, without them seeing me. After a few minutes, I saw Silver and another sailor talking near a beach. I want you to join us, Tom, because I know you're a good sailor. I'm telling you this to save you, said Silver. Silver, Tom replied, you're a good man and you shouldn't work with these pirates. I'd prefer to lose my hand than work with them. I knew then that here was a man that we could trust. Then came news of another. I suddenly heard a terrible shout, then all was quiet. What was that? asked Tom. Silver smiled and said that. Oh, I think that was Alan. Alan! cried Tom. He's a good man. If your men have hurt him, then you are no friend of mine. I won't help you. Tom began to walk away from Silver along the beach. Silver suddenly threw his crutch at Tom, and it hit him hard on the back. He fell to the ground, and before he could stand again, Silver killed him with a knife. Silver now blew a whistle and I knew that more of his men would soon arrive on the beach. I was very frightened. I walked quietly back into the trees, then ran as quickly as I could. As I ran, I began to think. What could I do now? When we heard Captain Smollett's gun, could I go back to the beach to be with these men? If I did, I knew that they would kill me. I would have to stay on the island forever.